I'm very interested to hear what these engines sound like now. Yeah. So we're going to the dock. Yeah. And go back. You have to say three of the biggest advantages. What would they be? Almost no maintenance, silence, and efficiency, regeneration. First of all, of course, it's so silent. And everybody knows if you're going by engine and you have the wind from the back, you have always the smell of the diesel. If you don't have to have it, life on board, especially with kids, is so nice. It's silent even on the engine and no smell. And yeah, it's sustainable as well. <laughs> you asked about uh, range. I would say usually if we would go out of here under electric motors, set sails outside, start sailing and uh, motor electric under electric power back to whatever anchorage or marina, tie up and no need to run the generator. At it's, all. And yeah. after, after all of that, cooking a meal for four person, having the full equipped kitchen, you can use the induction stove, everything. Why did you do it and would you do it again? Of course, it, it doesn't make sense for me in these days to buy diesel engines for propulsion. Uh, the efficiency is so much higher if you if you see that we run a 20 kilowatt generator for a third of an hour uh, to recharge the battery bank and we uh, continue motoring with four to five knots on a 20 ton boat this is amazing and the generator uses around five liters per hour so now you can now tell me how much your diesel engines uh, consume and you need both of them on so what's the biggest problem you encountered um, that made you feel that electric was the right choice then so the uh, worst part was uh, uh, bunkering the contaminated diesel fuel in Indonesia which is contaminated with solvents so I have it here and it is you can smell the solvent in it it's terrible why have you kept a tiny bit of diesel from Indonesia because I want to prove that this caused the generator engine to fail miserably uh, because the solvents uh, destroyed most of the uh, so engine that was, parts. So that's yeah, this is that was our costly. receipt. So this cost us more than ten thousand euros to fix the problem. This is the motor here between my, my legs. As you can see, it's pretty pretty small and it weighs around uh, 25 kilos. So that's all. And uh, this is the motor controller behind here. It's a standard Sefcon motor controller. So nothing uh, miraculous or whatever. It's just automotive standard technology. And the third important component is the sensor on top of the motor, which tells the rotor position to the motor controller. Okay. So this is all there is. There's a sail drive leg just under it. Um, the motor is cooled by circulating the uh, gear fluid in the sail drive. And this is our generator, which is a combustion engine. It's a four cylinder turbocharged Kubota uh, engine and uh, it has run 1,400 hours in the eight years. And why do you have the generator? Well, it's uh, for range extension. So uh, 
we use our battery bank wisely and don't drop too low to always have a safe reserve. So like 65% I tend to recharge uh, with the generator if we need to motor further. So and this explains the generator will kick in. It's a DC 48 uh, generator so it will feed directly into the battery bank and charge the batteries. What can you tell us about the batteries? Right, so as you can see they are Super B uh, manufactured in uh, Holland in the Netherlands. Uh, they are 12 here for the 48 volt bank and there's another couple more here for the 12 volt yeah. system. So, and these 12 volt guys are constantly charged through the converters here. This is a charger converter, this is a converter. So, they continuously produce 12 volt to charge, keep these batteries charged to 100%. All these batteries have their own battery management system. There's a fuse in every one, and you got the canvas cables here, right? Yeah. So, all battery management systems from each battery communicate with the communication interface, which is this here, and it shows you the status in here. And this is also connected to the Victron uh, color control in front of the boat to transmit the state of charge yeah. to the Victron and also to the Ocean Vault um, controllers, so they know when they can use hydro. Uh, generation um, safely because they will switch off at 95% state of charge. The uh, hydro generation is uh, switched off automatically. And in terms of the battery life, you've sailed around the world with these batteries. How much life is left? We know that a battery will not live forever. Yeah. Where uh, an engine also, everybody's always looking at engine hours. If you compare it, where are these batteries? So we have uh, roughly 850 cycles on the batteries, which is roughly a tenth of, of the lifetime of the batteries, okay. which is between eight to 12,000 cycles. Are you having to uh, plan your passages differently than if you had been uh, traveling with a diesel-powered uh, catamaran? No, not at all. There's no difference uh, in uh, passage planning. Uh, we usually only have uh, one tank full with diesel, 470 liters, uh, which will give us a runtime of roughly 100 hours on the generator. and taking into consideration that it's running only a third of the time the electric motors are working. This gives us 300 hours of motoring along. So that's two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's no different. So, I mean, you'd run out with a diesel engine, you'd run out, and that's not the normal use when you're, you're there to sail. Most of the time you have wind. What was the area where you had uh, the least amount of wind or so? Where is it critical to have an engine? Well, so it's uh, along the Indonesian islands chains uh, between 7 and 8 degrees south. There's hardly any wind uh, thermal in the morning starting a little bit and then over the day and then it's dying at night. But so you were still okay with an electric catamaran then in, even in that region where there's very low wind? Yes, of course, because uh, we had uh, our diesel tanks full and uh, we could motor along. What, what I'm concerned about is that um, mm -hmm. you're an engineer, you understand a lot about this boat, but people that just want to go boating, yeah, they want to turn a key, they want they know how to sail, they want engines that'll just run, they want something that's simple. Can you use this or do you need to be an electrical engineer to be able to maintain this boat? No, no, no. Uh, so, I mean, when we started, I didn't have uh, much ideas about the canvas and uh, connections everywhere and how, 
how the motor controller works. This is all discovered on the journey. How easy is it to know whether something's going wrong or if everything's all right? Very easy because uh, the Victron color control will tell you about anything that's uh, a warning situation or, or things that are not normal. So it's you don't need to do anything on a daily basis to, to maintain the, the system. You just monitor it. In the morning, I click on the color control, tells me uh, state of charge of the batteries. I personally prefer 65% because then I charge from 65% to 85%, uh, which usually means uh, 20 minutes of uh, generator running per hour. So the run, so the generator just runs for short intervals and that allows you to keep going infinitely then? Well, in, uh, until your uh, diesel is, is gone or okay, your exactly. generator will fail. But it's a long, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a